3D Rapunzel from Tangled Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everybody, in today's video I have Rapunzel from Disney's Tangled and this is one of my last installments in my Disney Princess series. There's at least two more though, I say one of the last because there's been so many and if you think you have missed any of the previous ones, check my description box because I have links to all of them that have been uploaded already there. And so I hope you guys like this as much as I do. I've always felt like I'm a kindred spirit with Miss Rapunzel and you know, <laughs> the crazy long hair and all. So I hope you guys like it as much as I do and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! I'm going to begin with an overlay of a glittery white acrylic over the background. All of these Disney Princess nails that I have done so far have had that same background on them and you guys will see why I kept them so similar in just a very short time. But I'm going to encase the nail with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure it is nice and strong. That shimmery white, glittery white color that I used in the background is fairly strong on its own. It's not super, it's not the kind of glitter that is um, extremely delicate. but. Just a nice little clear layer is a good safeguard. Then file it into shape with your e-file, starting out the coarse bit, then doing a finer bit to make it easier to work on top of. And now I'm going to start sculpting Miss Rapunzel. So to do her head and her torso, I used a cover pink acrylic. That gives cover pinks give it a very natural kind of sheerness that skin has to it. So that's a great way to start out sculpting these characters if you do have one that isn't super pigmented because it does give you a little bit more realistic of a translucency to the skin. So that's her head starting out, and then I'm going to be adding her neck and her torso. And the reason that I did not sculpt her dress with purple, which I would have done on top of this little setup that I have right now, was I didn't have a purple that I thought was really quite the right color for her dress. So I did that later with gel polish, and you'll see that in just a moment. But it definitely works out if you don't have the right color for something like, you know, their hair, just not quite the right color, or the dress, or, you know, even their skin. You can always paint things later. You could sculpt this whole thing just with white and then add all the details with gel paint or gel polish or acrylic paint in just a moment. So sculpt all of the shapes. And it's kind of funny when I was sculpting this, I added, I sculpted the little tufts that are on her dress with the cover paint. So it looks like she has some very interesting, um shoulder bones in there. But then I'm going to be using a warm gold acrylic to sculpt her hair. So just take a little beads at a time and kind of work them down into the shape of her mass of hair. And I feel very uh, like I'm a kindred spirit with Rapunzel with all the hair. I know Terrell has made several Rapunzel jokes towards me because I've got such long hair. It's actually short compared to, you know, how long I used to have it. I used to be able to, I'd keep it just to the point where I couldn't sit on it because I didn't want to be able to sit on it, but it was just right above that, right above that point. Now it's about waist length, but I've always loved long hair. So me and Rapunzel, we would get along for sure. When you're adding her hair, make sure that you do add a couple little details and a couple thicker areas, especially right around her face to kind of frame her face a little bit more, which is what I'm adding now. Just add a second layer of acrylic right in those areas and just take the tip of your brush and kind of push and pull them to get that little swoosh of hair that goes right in front of and around her face. Do that for both sides. And if you wanted to add some more depth and some more color to her hair, you could have used a mixed bead of acrylic that had maybe some metallic gold in it and, you know, a couple different colors. Then I'm going to take my shimmery purple gel polish and I'm going to be painting on her dress. So fill in. There, you don't really see too much of it. This nail is relatively short, so you don't get to see all of the skirt or really much of the bodice either, but just a little bit. After you have that dress painted on, go ahead and cure it. And now I'm going to take some acrylic paint starting with brown and I'm going to be adding some depth to her hair. So just paint the little lines, use little bits of brown at a time and kind of work it out. First I started by outlining her face and then I'm going to go through and add little bits of that brown here and there just to give it some, give it some dimension. Add some outlines on her face, kind of fill in around her neck with that brown. Do little bits, like I said, here and there. If you want to, you can dilute your brown paint a little bit so it's easier to work with. My brown paint in general isn't very pigmented, so I don't have to do that. But then I'm going to take some metallic gold paint and add some highlights in her hair. Just a little bit to really give it some sparkle. Using a metallic color or a shimmery color in hair gives it so much life and makes it so much more realistic because it has that natural sheen to it. Then I'm going to take some light pink and add some details to her dress. So I kind of filled in the sleeves and then on the shoulders, I added a couple little stripes on it and then just a couple little crisscrosses if you have the space for it at the, um, right down the front and add a couple little white outlines on that as well. 
and then some black outlines if it's needed. Keep touching up and adding details here and there. And then going back to the brown, I'm going to add some of her facial features. So I'm going to start by outlining her eyes. Just like so. If you start by doing all these outlines, I like to call it sketching. I like to sketch in all of her facial features with black first and then, or with brown first. And then the ones that need it go through and darken them with black. The brown is a little less permanent feeling. So if you happen to make a little, a little mishap, you have space or the ability to go through and adjust it some. When you start filling in her lips, give them a little bit of a pink hue. And then on her eyes, fill them in with white first. And then after that, you're going to want to go through and take some nice green and add her irises. Add that pink to her lips. I used some of a light pink and then some burgundy to give it a little bit more depth. There's the green for her irises. So really me and Rapunzel are, are two of a kind. Green eyes, ridiculously long hair. We go together very well. Add a little bit more darkness for her eyebrows. Outline her eyes just a little bit with black and add her pupils. If you were sculpting her larger on the nail so you could see more of her facial features, you'd want to add things extra like highlights in her eyes for sure and her eyelashes and all of those great things that is a little bit too small in this form to do. And then apply some gel sealer over the background and matte top coat over Rapunzel and that nail's all done. For the dress nail, I'm going to start out by just applying a clear overlay of acrylic over the nail. Because I don't have or I didn't use a dress color on of acrylic on the other nail, I'm going to paint this one with the same gel polish anyway so you don't really have to worry about a color in the base. So then file that nail into shape with your e-file. I started out with a coarse bit to remove any bulk, just go over the whole thing and then add uh, another layer of filing with a finer bit just to smooth it out and make it nice and nice and easy to work on top of. Then I'm going to be painting the nail with two coats of that same shimmery purple gel polish. And after that's done, I'm going to take the same light pink pink that I used before and go through and add all of the finer little details on the dress. So I started out with a V shape, almost like a V shape half moon, and then added some crisscross for the lacing that goes up the bodice of the dress. And then there's all kinds of lace that fills out the skirt. So I started out with just a little row of loops around that V-shape. So I did half circles that overlap. And then after that, I'm going to take two skinny lines of that pink paint and add those down or going down towards those two tips of the coffin. And then on each of those lines, I added a pattern. So I started out my pattern with almost like a lotus shape, so three petals. And then add a curly Q, little swirly off each side of that and then repeat that same pattern on the other side starting out with the three petals shape a couple little dots and then the curly cues the hardest part about this design is making sure that your curly cues are mirrored and that shouldn't be so difficult but it's if you start overthinking it it definitely can give your mind a workout after that apply a layer of gel sealer and you're all done i am loving all these disney princesses if you missed any that i have uploaded in the past definitely check out all the links in the description box and i'll see you next time bye